Happy Friday night, folks. Keith here from Come on the Hoop Celtics. So I have two special guests tonight. Two boys from Cope Bridge. I've got Connor, Connor Gla, and I've got Carson. How's it going, lads? Happy Friday to you. Nice. Right, it's going good, man. It's going good. I not bad. It's pre, pre-match day, isn't it? So... That's it. Well, it's mad to think we all woke up this morning with a bit of surprising news as well with the law. Well, oh, mate, I woke up last night with my fifth and I seen it. As I, as I say, you opened the bottle of book fast with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what, what do you think? Like, obviously, it was coming, we all wanted it to happen. Is it just it's a bit of a shock that happened so quick? Uh, I think that. To be honest, I'm shocked it happened dead quick, but it kind of all makes sense now. Why, why he's still in the job? Why? I understand why he's going because he's done his bit. At the end of the day, when he's been there, he's he's hired so much good managers over the years. We've won loads of trophies. Do you know what I mean under Peter Lovell? And when we haven't won trophies, we went on good European runs. He's spent money. It's not like he hasn't spent money for us. The only issue we've ever had is that he's not... We think personally that he's been the one to choose what players come in rather than Neil Lennon. Do you know what I mean? So that's probably the biggest issue. It's been recently, but uh, no, apart from that, he'd done his bit and this season, just unfortunately... uh, I just said bless the family. (laughs) But I'm... I'll, I'm not going to say it now, actually, right? But I'll say it down the line. You know what I'm going to say? I've commented on all your Instagram posts in it, and I'm still continuing to think it's still a chance. But we'll we'll get into that, right? Ah, well, we'll, we'll get into it, Connor. This morning you said you all go with a smile. Is it a case that, like... Do you know what Lobo has done for our club? We're, in the last 20 years, we've won 15 domestic league titles. He has pumped the money in, but this season he's just fucked us. So year out of the ten, we're meant to pump so much players in, and it's like we bought Barkas in, which I don't even think Lennon had a say in that. I don't think anyone. I think he just brought him in as a, as a like a wee move. I think he's gonna be the next Fraser Foster, and he's done his dirty. The issue is, so we don't actually know the obviously who actually bought Barkas, who bought these players. We just think and assume that it wasn't Neil Lennon's doing. Do you know what I mean? I don't so think that's... it was Lennon because you had Lennon recently saying like. Scott Bain is now my number one. He's always been my number one. So why? Where, where did Barkas come from then? Oh, I, think it, I think it's embarrassing that we've we're going no. through every every four to five weeks by changing our mind about who should be number one in nets. It's, the thing is, it, since Young Hazard started this season, I've always backed him. He's not had any bad mistakes. He had a few errors, but compared to Barkas, he said fucking nothing. <laughs> I, my heart goes out for Barkas, you know, like this is a lad that was rated highly, you know, all our European clubs are looking at him and I was like, oh, this is a steal. I just hasn't worked out for him. Like he's just, he's no command of his box. As I, I keep comparing when De Gea went to Manchester United, he was the same, he's fragile, he couldn't control his box, corners. But like even every keeper that we've had in goal this season has been brutal when it comes to set pieces. And it's the defenders as well, like, you know, but regards to law, well, it's just like he's gonna move on. We have we have a lad coming in, what Tom Dominic McKay, 13 mm-hmm. years at the in the Scottish Rugby Association, and then obviously one of the was the head person of the Pro 14. So yeah. I'm happy that we're getting someone that's not Celtic related in. I'm delighted. Like he has came out he has come out to be a Celtic fan, but not a big one. Um but it's good but we've got a new face coming in, somebody fresh. Somebody with, a it's from a different from a different background, not a football background. He's not went and done like teams abroad. He's like he's coming in as a new face of this whole industry. So he's done well with <coughs> rugby. He's now coming into Celtic, and I hope he's got good ambition for us because we need somebody to now lead our club forward again. We were going that way, the right way. We we're going forward every season, and then for some reason this season we've just collapsed. I don't think he needs to be a Celtic fan anyway, to be honest with you. I just think he needs to have the right ambition and right respect, regardless. And, and what would you like to see him do? Like, what would be the first thing to do? Obviously, I think Celtic made this decision. Des- Desmond made the decision because he knows that the season, a lot of people, season books are under threat of renewal next season. That's why I think he announced it. I said I'd I, announce it, it then. probably would be, because at the end of the day, I don't think they would have sold much next year. And no. you've also got the side where... 
there's not going to be, obviously, most likely football back, at least until the end of the year. I still don't think fans will be back at the start of next season. No. No I chance. Think it's by December so. time. By yeah, time yeah, for all, yeah, right. But the football will still be on, but I just don't... I'm I just not confident in the fan coming back. I'd love to see him bring in... And it sounds bad, like I love Lennon, what he's done for the club. He's done amazing, but I'd love to see him. I've, I've said it since day one, since before Lennon even got announced originally. Rafa Benitez, bring him up and let him work wonders at the club. Uh, I don't know. To be he honest, has said it. it will hold out until July. If there's no job opportunity, Scotland would be a shout for him. Rafa has said this. I don't know. I think there's still hope for Rafa, and I would love to see Rafa there. I'd see, like Rafa, to see Rafa, Rafa, but I think there's a lot of better, cheaper options, to be honest with you as well. But why Rafa would you Rafa? Rafa was doing his new, Newcastle salary. He was on eight million a year. We had to join it. He was on twelve million a year. It's it's selling it's selling the till to Rafa. So this like lads Dominic that's coming in. Just call him Domo. We call him Domo for the laugh. Domo that's coming. Domo that's coming in. Domo he has to he has to sell this to him because we're not guaranteed. As I say in many podcasts, we're not guaranteed that we're going to get Champions League next season. No. We have two rounds no. to play, and we don't know where our squads. Like the way the squad is, I would at the moment. Win the Scottish Cup because we get the last round of the Europa League qualifiers if we win the Scottish Cup. I'd rather now focus on the Scottish Cup, winning that, and getting the laugh in the Europa League, and at least we're guaranteed European football. Then I have a feeling the Scottish Cup won't be played. I know they postponed it, but I have a feeling it won't be played. To be honest with you, and if Neil Lennon goes out with a Scottish Cup, it means that what he started was the Scottish Cup as well. So, okay. Um, I want to talk about Lawwell. Lawwell, what was it? Twenty, what was it? Twenty nine trophies. Fourteen leagues. Like it, it done well. It, it so, the club well. Yes, over the years it has pissed the fans off. It has, and um, with some of his stuff, some of the things he said out in the press, um, some other antics he's done, signing wise, letting people go, maybe too early to let them go. Um, but do it, fair play to the guy. He's done well, and it is his time. <laughs> <clears throat> now listen to the fans and you know what I can't stand the abuse anymore it's not fair to him it's not fair to his family he's done the right thing and now he's retiring before he'll be retiring at the end of the season and I hope he gets the send, the send off he deserves because he has done the club wonders he it's going to be weird without the fans though they won't have a banner or, I don't think any, I don't think the green big or the boys would do a banner from. Well, it's funny you mention that because 12 hours before Lawwell announced his retirement uh, boys were out at Parkhead, stuck on picture of his face with the cross. 12 hours before. I think he's been in in the morning, seen that, and went, nah, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> That's it. Res- resigning. But I, Hang I, on. So you've got a lot of, sorry, Keithy boy, uh, you've got a lot of, basically, like, fans who were obviously against Lowell, saying get out of our club, etc. right? Even after everything he's done, right? But it wasn't just telling him to get out, it was abuse he was getting. And now the same people are saying how well he done and how much they appreciate everything he done. Do you feel sorry? Don't you feel sorry because it's actually right, it's and they've just completely contradicted themselves, do you know what I mean? And I'm gonna I'm gonna I don't ask think you making question. the fans be acceptable for the club themselves. That's the ones that are letting this down. Do you do you feel worried? Do you think this is a big bad decision down the line for us? Because he's probably one of the best cheap executives in British football. Well there's been hundreds of European clubs that's wanted them and I don't just mean small ones, I mean big ones. Man United wanted him at one point. Apparently, he's rumoured to actually be going to Man United. In I heard yeah, he's uh, meant to be taking the FIFA job. He's meant to be taking the cheap executive of the FIFA I, job. I wouldn't be surprised if he went to something like massive <laughs> anyway. He's, he's anyway really what, do what do you think, Connor? Do you think it could be a regret down the line if we don't get a, <sighs> we get shit together? I think we need to wait and see what happens in, in a year's time with this new boy. Because that's a new boy. Look at the, the Huns. Now, I don't want to mention them, obviously, as much, but mm. they thought big things were happening with somebody like Char- uh, Craig White coming in, who did have football and background, and look what happened. It worries me. But this guy's got such a good reputation in rugby and in Scotland that I've got faith in him. He'd do well for our club. So it's just it's, a wait and see. But Celtic's in a better position like financially than what Rangers were when Craig White took over there. So it's not getting made up. up. It was more the fact that, like, this guy out of nowhere came in Bought them, promised them the world, and we all remember what happened. And it's <laughs> a guy that's coming in who we, none of us know if, if, if you had him unless you watch rugby. Oh, I, don't I watched a couple of these interviews this morning after this was announced, and 
he speaks speaks quite well. Um, seems like one of the lads a bit of crack as well. Lennon did say that Lawwell was behind the recruitment that are getting this guy in. When I was thinking about with you, there was a press. He done a press conference back in April, obviously when the Six Nations was on a tread, and all the sporting sporting associations of Scotland and the big clubs came together with these different sports. I'm have a feeling that Lawwell knows him from that. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why you contacted him for the for the job. And it's a good step for the the young guy. Like he's not too. He's not too far in his career yet. Like he's a still a young age to come in and do something well. Here's a here's a question for you. So what if we get into the Champions League next year and we put up banners that are not meant to be in the Champions League, a political banner or there's Pyro put up? How is is it gonna be a law well step to it? Are we gonna take the penalty take the fine? Is he well, gonna approach that certain I fans? That's the just... now they've kind of stopped the political banners, I've noticed this. They have kind of they've stopped more it's more Behind the team ban, or that's more this type of stuff. It's been more about the board recently than political than anything. Cause you've seen the don't fall asleep at the ten, which has happened now. And the Tommy Bonds one was smashed. The Tommy Bond one that got took down, and because it didn't meet Europa League releg- regulations, because it's covering one of the banners. Um, it's just it's mad. I think the groups will now need to take it into consideration that they might not get off so lightly now. That's new boy coming in because he could come in strict on the fans with the pyro, with the banner. He could just come in and say, Nah, do you know what? safe standing shot for half a season. And he could. So I think they could in their head need to think about this. Bruni's interview was brilliant today. And do you know what? Before I Bruni done his interview, I done a YouTube video. I was talking about Bruni, how he was sold the Celtic brand down in London. Him, Strachan, Tommy Barnes, and Lawwell had a meeting down in a fancy hotel. And when the Huns tried to sign him, it was in a car park. In the middle of Edinburgh. I've heard that one. Oh, yeah, I've heard so, that one as well. So, like, that's a prize that Lawwell could take. Like, he's at the bring, he bring in a, a lad that was a, the hottest guy, Scottish transfer at the time between two clubs. I think it was 4.3 million from Hibs. Mm-hmm. And what, look, him 13 years later, captain the club over 22 honours for, for, for us. And people, yes, they'll write him off, say, oh, he's fucking this, he's that. I had someone the other day saying that we should sell, we should um, sack Scott Brown. I was like, Sack Scott Brown. I was like, wake up to reality because it's one mistake. You should sack Scott Brown. He's won over, he's played over 600 times for the club on one over 22, 22 honours, and you want to sack your own captain. That's pathetic. Well, that backs up what I was talking about earlier on, where people were quick to slate all well, and as soon as he leaves or he announces he's leaving, sorry. Uh, basically they're quick to see how much he's done for the club and how much he respect it it's someone to Scott Brown Scott Brown's not been at his best the last two seasons pushing on three uh, he's clearly lacking fitness and that's just down to getting older but people are quick to throw yeah, under the bus regardless of what he's done do you know what I mean it's just the way some fans are and they should Kenny, Kenny was saying give Lawwell some credit brought, brought the debt down from 100 million Gave us Lennox Town, new CEO to engage with the fans, tell it what the strategy is, plans and models with the club is going to use. See, you know, what, this young guy mm-hmm. comes in, this is our 10 year plan. This is what we want to do. And it could be like stadium upgrades. Because there was talks before. Do you, about, do you really think do you really think we should expand the stadium? Well, this about, this is just no, one, it's not the right time to do it. It's not, but seeing 10 years' time, there is talks in the amount of them expanding the. Oh, what's it called? The wee stand. What am I? What? Oh, why the bay, the edge was that. The edge was that. I the wee stand. I call it the Walford stand. <laughs> Aye, that one. Alex, they're talking about expanding that to a second tier. Right. All, and there is, and it, but that's what I mean. It comes in, say, in July, does a press conference say this is what our plan is for the next 10 years going forward. That's a what about the ho- and plus, people are forgetting about the hotel that he's also put plans in as well. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, right, there's, like, there's a hotel and all that's meant to happen. I don't know what the plan is because it just kind of went silent. One minute, well, you got to all... you got to see like what we've went from 1994 up to now. I know he wasn't; he was around the club in 1994 under the old administration. But where we have where, where we have where we have torn as a marketing tool is colossal for a shit league we're in. Is unbelievable. Oh, listen, look what we've just done with Jeremy Frimpong. We've turned a 350k player and a 13, Euro, 13 million euro player mm-hmm. in one season 
Unbelievable. And I, you know I still what personally think he's a massive loss, right? Just if you want to talk about him. A lot of people I said that he wasn't good at his crossing, etc. right? But look at everything else he'd done. He might not have been good at crossing, but he could get past the defence and just pass the ball back as a, a natural cutback. Do you know what I mean? So, do, you, do you think it's down to Neil, do you think it's down to Neil Lennon with man management as well, though, Sean? What is it? Sorry. Do you think it's down to Neil Lennon, man management, not getting the best out of Ring Pong, the coaches as well? I think he did uh, get the best out of him. To be honest with you, I think it was just a matter of Ring Pong just wanting to leave because of the way the full team was playing. Because most of the time he was one of the main standouts for me. There was other players in the team that he's Hi. just. There's other teams that he's not got the best out in. So there's not so it's and it's just down to the players and individual. Obviously, they just clearly don't like Neil Lennon or respect him enough. Connor, um, overall, what do you think Lawwell's Law best signing, best bit of business? I'm going to have to leave Sissy Lawson, but apart from that, it's going to have to be somebody like look what he's done with Virgil Van Dyke. Look what he's done with. Fraser Foster, he's brought these young unknown names up to our club. They've made their name Wyama as well. We've still players that have ended up doing wonders in the English football and we're still a 10 point league. But half our best players are down there fucking tearing up. Look at Van Dyke, Champions League winner, captain captain Liverpool. But they Alan, don't Alan, Alan Dawn, how many? Alan Dawn, exactly. But I have to say, best bit of business has to be Larson. To me, it'll always be it's my hero, but I'll always back Larson. But I know Sean's probably a big fucking Sutton. Why about who fucking you, Sutton? Why not just big Chris Sutton? Who would you think, who would you think was the best bit of business? John, he's done. The best bit of business that Orwell's done? Yeah, like Saul boys. Uh, probably. It's a hard one, to be honest with you, but. Maybe I'm actually trying to think about it now, man, but I can't really think of any specific players, to be totally honest with you. That stand do you know who I'm going to go with? Dem Bailey, got, we got a lot of money for, obviously, do you know what I mean? But to be honest with you, that's a player that I knew would go on to bigger things anyway. So I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of a player that we got good money for that wasn't that good if you get me and I, I can't really think well, of it. Well, Connor was saying 350 grand that we got for Fring Pong. Look at we bought Dembele for what was it? A million and a half was it? From Fulham. I think it was less. Uh, I think it, no Dembele was a uh, 500k. Was like, it? I uh, 500k. Yes. But my I think honestly my opinion is the best bit of business we have done was Tierney. Because we they went in they went in three times from, and the club backed their way. They went in what what was it ten million, fifteen million, and then twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, That's right. They, they held on to him to be fair, and it got to the point where Tierney's like, right, look, I just I'm happy to go if it helps you out financially, and it did. Did you ever watch his podcast with uh, Slaney and that? Yeah, it's very good. He got at the, like, his, his parents' house getting spray painted and stuff, just because he went he went on and done better things than Arsenal. Like the boy had done everything in Scottish football. There's not much more to do at that age. There isn't. They say, well, you get you know yourself. You get people that just think that you're you're gonna be Celtic for life. You're gonna be a gigsy. You're gonna play the rest of your career at one club, and that's how modern day football is not like that anymore. You know, you move on and. We'd be lucky to hold up Cal McGregor and James Forrest. Let's be honest. I think Callum will go in the summer or just have a sneaky faint. It depends. He'll be getting on his management. Well. I said that as well. I think he'll be away. I don't think he's getting ca- if Scott Brown retires at the end of the season, he's getting captaincy. And he won't leave if he knows he's getting captaincy. But do you think That's he's good enough for the captaincy? That's the no. thing, though. I think Ayer's a better captain. I think Ayer's a better captain, but also at the same time, I think Ayer's going to be away as well. I think Ayer will be away. Ayer will be gone by, by, by that's, July. That's, that's what I'm scared of. I love Kyle McGregor as a player. I, I think we'll go he's as, we'll... just not captain material but he's starter material and I think that going forward if Ayer was to leave I personally think that uh, David Turnbull's got the possibility for it because he has got a background and attitude oh Turnbull's I don't know why we never started Turnbull for the moment he got fit he does he speaks to every player in the park you can see it when he plays 
and I he's, he's not. I don't. I don't mean just the strikers and the midfielders. He turns back and speaks to the defenders, and not only that, he speaks to them because all he does throughout the full game that he plays is move about the full park, communicating to get the ball moving. He's like he's trying to push the team on constantly. So I think I genuinely think David Turnbull's got a hell of a lot of good potential for it. And I think, to be honest with you, that might be the only way we can hold on to him because he's been a a, a gemmy a signing. I, mean, I, can't, I can't see clubs going in from already for Tornbo because no, he's away. if he keeps it up this the rest of this season, there, there is going to be bids for him. It'd be like a John, uh, it'd be like a John McGinn, uh, like a John McGinn. I right? John McGinn, obviously, I mean, that's not be like gold. I mean, we, we could have that's, easily a law, that's a law well fuck up. Yeah, I've not paying extra money. The lies, like, they wanted, they only wanted four million from him, and we bought in. Who did we bring in? We brought somebody stupid in that we never used. And then Arthur Villa's asking for like 45, 50 million. You think it, wasn't, it wasn't Scott Allen, was it? No, Scott Allen was before oh, that. It was before that. I'm trying to think, who was that? It? It'll come back to me. But it was like we had the chance to get him in the January transfer window. Didn't take him. And then he went off to Villa. And it's just been like, you bite, you've, you've got to bite your arm off at points like that. You're like, we could have had this young lad who's worth 30, 40 million. Like we've done with Tierney, like we've done with Frimpong, brought some of them for a little bit of money and sold them on for great profit. It's so, done I mean, every season, there's always one player that goes for more than Bailey, Tierney, and then Frimpong. So, should we focus on developing new, new talent from the academy? I think it's, I think the youth, and since Lennon's taken over, he hasn't put a lot of faith into the youth players. Prime example is Karamoko. Karamoko de Bailey, I know. He's a player for me that should have been. Starting now, and I don't know if it was it last season. I think it was last season. He came in right, and I think it was against Hearts. And there was one moment right that for me stood out the most. He was going to get took down. He took it past a player right. He gets swiped to the deck, but got straight back up and continued forward. Took it past another one or two players and had a shot. Do you know what I mean? It's small things like that that proves a lot of what's the word for it. I mean, the boy was the boy's only about eighteen or something. Nineteen. Malumbi, who we saw in that's who it was. I was trying oh, to think. That's who it was. But the thing is, you look at our youth. Rogers invested in the youth. He really did. Like the last game of Rogers had, um, done wonders. He brought a lot of youth set up. And I think for the moment, Forrest got injured. Karim Oku should have been the first call up on that wing because he plays exactly how Forrest plays, if not better. And it's just that it'd been an ideal replacement for Forrest in recovery. And I think we're missing. Week out, I, th- experience. I think that's why we're missing this season where Forrest cuts in, always cuts in with the outside of the first shot. That's what we're missing big time. How many times has Forrest cut in and done that outside of the first shot and scored from it? Remember that goal he scored against Rangers? Remember the goal yeah, against Rangers as a prime one, the one, the one in the Easter Road, it must have been about six or seven years ago, two all game. One of the best skulls I've ever seen, the way you just hit it. But the that's another, up. the biggest issue if you're missing Forrest as well, apart from what he actually brings to the game, is the fact that when Frimpong's been playing right back, he's been having to do everything down that right-hand side. He's have, he's had to be a right midfielder as well as a right, right back because he hasn't had someone like James Forrest down the right-hand side with him. Do you know what I mean? So that's that could have an effect on Frimpong as well. He might feel like he's doing absolutely everything. Can you imagine that we had Frimpong playing like that the way he has it this season as well as James Forrest? Then maybe we would have got somewhere when it comes to wing wing play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hundred percent. Here, here's one for you, right? Do you remember we signed Isagay Ray? It's four time around. Was it the third time around we signed Isagay Ray? Mm-hmm. And he was he was that he was that he was nowhere, right? Would you get PC Lustig from AOK for the last the end of, the end of the season? Would you take him since we've not really don't have a right back now? What well, are and I'll hammer the question mark. Would I take Easy Kitty back? Would you take Lustig back for the rest oh, of the Lustig. season? Oh, uh, you know how I, I feel. Lustig about Lustig. I'd take Lustig back in a heartbeat, man. That broke my fucking heart. Him leaving. You should never have not got offered the stage. Do you know what I mean? Because that was that. See, if Brunetta, that was your future captain. That he managed that back line in the midfield. And his legs scoring. might have been gone, but he could have easily slotted into the centre back issues if we've had. But do you, th- do you think? Would you think it was down to Lawwell where why Scott and Claire left? Would you think it was down yeah. to Lawwell? He wouldn't give Johnny Hayes another year. He wouldn't give um, Lustig another year. I Gordon another year. 
it'll be wage demands as well. One man I think we're missing in defence is Big Jozo. Mam was never afraid to put a tackle in and was never afraid to take one-on-one. Do you know what? After the call for Hagen. I feel like this season, Duffy just shot it to one-on-ones. I do. I feel like he just... Ah, he, he, he he's had a lot working on personally as well, though. That kind of thing. Yeah, you yeah, I mean? understand that thing perhaps with his dad and family. But on the pitch, he's not... Even like before de- December, he wasn't playing the way... He was like what made out to be. Like he was made out to be that great defender. He's but you know what? I was just thinking about this about Duffy. A lot of people give him grief. If he was still on this for this type of farm, imagine being in Celtic Park playing that bad and the fans giving you shit. It'd be ten times worse. <laughs> he wouldn't right. give him the game, that's the thing. Lenny wouldn't start him if the fans were there. Because he knows the yeah. abuse he would get from all around that stadium. Hey, right. Keith, by the way, my laptop's just about to run out of charge. Okay, right, okay. well, me, me and Connor will um, continue on. We have a good bit to talk right. about the same guy. Great to have you on, Sean. All right, I'll see you after, guys. Hey, take care. See you after. Right, so we'll we'll move on. Anyways, good to see him on. So, yes, yeah, Simonovic, I was one of them p- people that was like, get rid of him after the Copenhagen yeah. game, get rid of him. I've always backed Jozo, especially for the tackle he done to Kenny Miller. That will always go down history. The Jozo tackle to Miller when he flies him up in the air and he still runs ahead and ends up scoring. The, the, the Titanic music is absolutely epic with that. It is. It's more when you listen to it on Rangers TV and they're like, we'll go to the SFE on Monday morning about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not ever came for it. Not ever came for that tackle. Right. So give me give me four players that will go in the summer. Don't you don't don't put a noosey and lax all in it because they're off anyway. <laughs> And Duffy, we know that. And, and Cham. How much would you put on the Cham? Now, give me a valuation of this. At least 20, 22 million. Are you serious for the Cham? Yep. I think it's going to be an English club, yes. Between 18 and 22 million, we could get for the Cham. Because when Cham plays at his best, think about it. You think when Cham, and Cham plays on, on point, he's on point. He's not. He's. It's only this season I've noticed he's dipped. And I think, again, it's to do with the, the board and the fans. I think not having the fans there because that's what dri- drives our team on. And not I having think, the fans there. But you know what? There's no harm. There's no harm I'm aiming holy. And if we don't get, we we get something there. Fuck it, why not? Go bit of business. But look at Kowasi. What did we get for Kowasi? Four million or something. We bought him for a little to nothing. Aye, uh, Kowasi was a, a strange one. Um, yeah. Second player again would be Ayer. Ayer's gone. We know that. Valuation. Fifteen to twenty. I'd be happy I- with. I'd be, I'd be happy with 15 million. Oh, yeah. You know what? I just, as I said, I would... he's a young lad. He's got a lot, lot of potential, but I'd like him to go to see what Frimpong's done, go to fucking Germany. And Germany won't bad show. Germany would be a great shit for that young lad. Like Bundesliga, would you like to see him, like I'd say, Dortmund yeah. or something, or even Dortmund or your you teams say. like Han- Hamburg or somebody who's up and coming. W- w- Wolfsburg is, is coming into my head for some reason. <laughs> See, I was thinking more Borussia Mönchengladbach or as everyone knows it, is that German oh. team. <laughs> yeah, that won't be a bad shout. That'd be a good shout. They need a good centre-back you now. I thought you were going to so, say St. Pauli. So he's, 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 he's too good for St. Pauli. <laughs> Pauli's second division. They're, they're in the verge of relegation at the moment. Um, <laughs> third one right. would have to be we know French Eddie. I think he'll be going, gone this summer. My worry yeah. about him is the valuation. If he, if he does what he done on Wednesday night and can score the goal through now at the end of the season, you're talking 30, 35, maybe 40 million. If he continues scoring, see if he drops form again, you're talking maybe 15, 20 million. And that's I, think the only, I think the only way his valuation is going to go up if he scores against Rangers in the last two fixtures. The only way he's going to freaking go up in price if he keeps just scoring anyway. Scores against the hundreds of bonus. Like, I, don't, many, like, I don't think penalties is going to put the valuation for him. I know it sounds weird. I know it's a goals, but I think he needs to score outside. outside you know, of the, there's certain things he has to do that the issue with him, he's not media driven. He doesn't know how to talk in the media. That's the issue. Most people he's not, like media. if he has slapped hands, cockiness be fucking. Oh, could you imagine? Or Jerry. Uh, um, fourth player I could see leaving. And I hate to say it because he's, he's got so much potential as young Hazard. Connor Hazard? We only see yeah. him he signed a new deal. I know, but think about... So did KT. KT signed a new deal and left six was, months later. They, they fucking knew that was happening, though. But think yeah. about it. This young lad has done one... He's, okay, 
He's kept his clean sheets. He's never lost. He's not lost. Five clean sheets. He's not lost. A, he's not lost a game yet in, in the goal for Celtic. True, that's a good fact. He won. He, look at what he done at the fucking the, the cup final. Yes, the issue was the two goals that he lost wasn't his fault. They weren't. But three goals. Sorry, the three goals he lost was never his fault. Daniel Charm, thinks we'll go to Spain. I, I don't think he will. Bilbao or Seville. I, t- I, t- I think there's too much racism in Spanish football. I can't see him going there. No, it's, him going back. it's more Italy. <laughs> I, he played in Italy, though. He played for, like, what was a Bologna and all and stuff like that. He yeah, played yeah. relaxed, though. Aye. But no, I can see him. If you go to Spain, see your Sevilla or your Atletico Bilbao, mid-table. I can see Bilbao. Bilbao. I can't see Bilbao fucking money out from, though. They're, they're, they're not that club, type of club. The thing is, Bilbao tend not to bring players in. To keep it in the Basque and state, and that's it. That's yeah. the, the way they do it. And well, they're going to, to eventually b- branch out. To that's it. That, to keep that fucking. Could you know what Madrid are doing? Madrid top of that table at the moment, and we've just went and they, they just went and basically signed them barely, who again came from Celtic. And then if he goes, went to, was it twenty-two million at the end of the season? If he goes, which is three million, I'll take an extra three million. Right, I'm going to say about Edward, I just have a sneaky feeling that Edward might go before this Edward. window's open. No, I don't. What, when those shots what, were on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If we, Monday, we're, offered, if we're offered 18 million for Edward, I would buy it and take it. But then we're stuck with, you now I rate him highly, but Polish Paddy, who hasn't had form as of recently, and we're stuck with uh, Graf, who has his days. But isn't match fit yet? He is never. He's not going to be match fit for a long time. That's why I say to a lot of people onto this page: Why is he not match fit? It's not like he's fucking twenty-five years of age. He's twenty years of age. That's why. He loves T-takes. T-takes. I don't know what the hell is fucking that doesn't have him fit. But he's lovely goal the other night, cracking goal. Oh mate, and that's what I say to my missus and my brother. See when they two play together, they feed off each other's fucking goals. Edward sets Griff up, Griff sets Edward up. It always works, it always works together. And I don't know why on Old Firm Day that didn't click. I really don't. I don't know why it didn't click, but I wouldn't have took Griff off. I'd have took French Eddie off on Old Firm Day. And at, at that point, they let us down. They took Griff off, who Edward can only work with Griff for some reason. He won't feed off any other striker. He doesn't like it. I don't know why. I've noticed it before when he played with Kamala and he played with Yeti. They don't sink well. Do you think yeah he's getting a lot of shit, to be honest? yeah it is. Like, I think I, he hasn't really got his chance to approve. Like, he's fair enough. He was brutal. He was brutal up in Pataudry that time. He played away. Was it away? And he actually played well against Lille away. I, I'm sorry, I'm not lying um, So, I, last player to, I think, they'll leave. Um, let's we'll see. In Champ 10, maybe... I'd say between 10 and 15 for in Cham in general. I have 15, I'd take to 17, which I've said. Christy, I could see Christy going for more. I could see Christy going for around 10 million, Mark. Who do you think will go for Christy? I don't. I can see your West Ham, your Crystal Palace, see somebody like that, Newcastle. I could, if, I could see somebody like mid-table in the BPL coming for... I'll America. just have a, fight, a, sne- a little sneaky Bourne or something like that. Nah, I don't think he'd go that far down. Would, would, would it be a Southampton? <laughs> with Stewie? Nah, we've done too many deals with him now, man. I'd be a bit... I wouldn't, I wouldn't even sell him because he didn't give us... If, 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 he, if he didn't give us War Prowse as an exchange... If they give us Prowse and Freda, Freda Foster, then I maybe. Maybe we'll talk... Oddie Tam, I see him just playing out his contract. I don't see him wanting to go for money. I think he'll play his contract. Well, there's talks that we could be getting a few lonely players now. Obviously, this Ben Davis thing broke last night that he signed. He's on a pre-contract, but Neil Lennon came out today and said it's not true. Get him up. Is it not? It's not it's true. Sky yeah. Sports report. Sky Sports report. Yeah. Part, so person it? asked him in the press conference today, and he's like, "I read on that comment on players until the deals are done." But then the deal's done. But what hasn't been done is they want to bring him up from now to the end of the season. See, like Madrid have done with Dembele. I think that's what he's commenting on. He's waiting for that to like that happens. I think he's got potential. Like I looked him up twenty. I looked him up during the summer. Twenty six years of age. He's he's been at the club since he's what fourteen. Oh, he's like a KT. (laughs) Davis is signed for Bournemouth. Since when? I know that they went. They got the other lads. Yeah, two seconds. I know we're middle of that. I'm I'm going to check this. 
Did you see Morelos is getting fined off the FPL? Finally. Um, because he's tackle. Um, he gets away with murder. Thanks very much, folks, for the 26 years watching. If you could subscribe to the channel, really appreciate it. Look at my 200 oh, away from 5k. One that's not one broken the last day. The last day I've only just seen it. Birmingham is set to sign Sam Cosgrove. That's, a good, a, good deal. that's a good deal. We could have went for Cosgrove. I think Cosgrove would have been a bit of bit of spine to the team. I'd have loved to have seen him. What would you take, Hedges? Mm, I don't know. Apparently, Ben Davis hasn't went to who was it that was it said he went to? Do you know what? If it doesn't work out in Barracas and Barracas goes on loan in the summer, do you know who I take as a as a one say a number one keeper? Because we were I don't think Salah going away and fish the markets. I think this this summer we're gonna look at domestic players. I take Hibbs keeper. Israeli lad. Yes. I think he's not a bad keeper. See how when I watched him for the Scotland the Scotland Israel game, I watched him and he didn't do anything wrong. He he actually played well. And uh, he's got potential. I'd like to see him come. But the thing is, would Jack Ross, Jack Ross would want something in return from Celtic. That's it. And uh, be honest with you, it could be like this this new guy that's coming in, Domo, as we call him, Domo McKay. He might go for a cheap option and go for Ross. Like he might not have the selling tools to go for a Rafa Benitez or, you know, mm. Eddie Hale. Like who would he? Who would five five people that who would you put in? Running for the Celtic job. Sorry, I was looking up the Ben Davis thing. There's nothing broke about him going to Bournemouth, so as always, I'm concerned. It's still on Sky Sports and he's signed with Celtic, so until Sky Sports tells me otherwise, then I. Um, who would I like to see to the Celtic job? Yeah, five, five people. I obviously like I said Rafa. I'm a Newcastle fan, so Rafa. I'd love to see Big Rafa in the fucking stands. Gaz, Gaz, that's just beyond this. He's a Newcastle fan. He met, he actually, I'll tell you a little story. For his tour, did his mum and dad put him in for a competition, and he and he gets a phone call on the Monday night. He's like, "Um, hey, you won a competition to come to train with Newcastle." So he had to get the train. He had to get the train down to Newcastle, and oh. he got the, he got the whole kit on, and he got to meet Raph and the boys, John yeah, Joe good. Shelby, the Tommy, and all all the lads. But um, right, so you're asking five. So Raph has won. Eddie Howe. I've been batting Eddie Howe since freaking October. Eddie Howe, would, I think he'd do wonders at Celtic. I really do. Um, but do you know what? Do you know, do you know the only thing that a lot of people are saying about Eddie Howe, but he's missing his, his, his number two because his number two is now the Bournemouth manager. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm anxious about, Eddie Howe. But I'm hoping if Eddie Howe comes in and gets rid of fucking John Kennedy. That's what I want. I want rid of John bring, Kennedy. Bring, bring, the, bring, bring the big man from Sweden, the blonde, the brown irony, Johannin. You'll have me out because you imagine it. Oh, thing is, I would take Larson because Larson is currently assistant manager at yeah, Barcelona. Why, why would you leave Barcelona to go to Celtic? But Number two. Managers can do a loan thing where we say to Barcelona, look, we'll have him for a, a year's deal. I would not. If I was, I wouldn't. Then look, but the thing is, it's going to be one of the things we'll just need to wait and see. Re- rebuilding um, season at Celtic, leaving the son of Barcelona to go to fucking. Nah, I'd. I'd I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think he's enough. So at the moment, the top five on odds checker is Rafa at five to six, Eddie Howe six to one, Frank Lampard, which nah, I don't see happening. Did you see the picture I put the other day? I'm not a fucking chance. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm with the Rangers fans. I've seen that one. I love, I, love, I, love, I love Lampard. I thought Lampard was a cracking player. Oh, I like his attitude. I like his attitude. I think he's. I think he's done a great job at Derby. I thought. I, I felt like he got robbed at Chelsea. I really do think. And a lot of oh, Chelsea yeah. fans I spoke to said if if they were in the stadium, he would have he, he would have been kept. But if it was uh, vice versa with Neil Lennon, if Neil, if their fans were in the stadium, he would have been gone. Uh, and then the last what? So we've got Alex Neil and then John Kennedy and Roy Keane. It's ten to one and sixteen to one. Roy Keane, no, not a fucking chance now. He was a shit player for us. I can't actually remember something he'd memorably done. He scored, he scored on his goal against Falkirk. Uh, oh, I fuck it. Oh, hey, hey, Falkirk. Then, against, against, against the Hones, he had a storm over again. Um, John Kennedy, I went out my club. I can't fucking stand him. Oh, him and that Gavin Stratton with his wee laptop. Nah, get them to fuck. Bring in, bring in my album, Big Johan, and bring in, I'd love to see... 
big Hartson as a defensive coach or big Bobo. We need somebody who can actually t- like the guys we've got to know aren't doing the job right. Clearly, I, I heard Mar- Marvin Comper is a good show. <laughs> <laughs> big Marvin Comper is an excellent manager. See, big Marv comes to Celtic again. I personally will hand in my season book to all to the freaking whoever the manager is and be like, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> that was the worst deal we've ever done. He played a whole of three minutes and still got a league league medal. He got three two minutes. league medals. Did he? I thought crazy, he was one. Crazy business. Yeah, he got two league medals. Sure, Chris Chris Commons got a league medal. He didn't, he didn't play all season. I know he played. A, he played because he played for Hibs. He played about four minutes. I know at the start of this season. <laughs> That's it. That's a man. Um, I I gave him a shit. I gave him a shit last night. Hold on, someone Sarah logs at the ass of me. Did I give someone a shout or last night? I did. I gave him. A, I gave him a shout on TikTok. Happy birthday. So um, yeah, um, <laughs> we came skilled Barry Fergs and all. Uh, yeah, yeah. But that bad. He lacked school Barry Fergs to see he was shit. Right. I had. I had. Um. I had Liam on the other night. He said he'd take Martin O'Neill. No. No. I think his tactics are shy. I, I, I think he's past it. I think not. Listen, I, I rate him as a manager. I always have, always will. He could be the first manager I remember growing up. Done wonders for Celtic. For Ireland, questionable. Very questionable. Forced, 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 forced campaign for Ireland. Unbelievable. Yeah. Second campaign, ridiculous. But it's like, he left a good legacy at Celtic. Does he want to come back? That's a, that, like Neil, Neil Lennon left a good legacy at Celtic. Exactly. He left, came back and it just kind of fucked him. Like Celtic have dominated Scottish football the last twenty years, and we don't even realise it. We're fifteen and twenty. We've won fifteen league titles out of twenty. And we won the last 12, 12 cups that was on show. And we've won. We've done amazing things, but sometimes our fans just don't appreciate it as much. Imagine being, um, imagine being the chief executive of a club that's won nine titles in a row. Oh, he'll walk into a, any job. Lawwell can walk that's, into any job tomorrow now, that's, that's, and he'll get it. He's done wonder at Celtic, like I said, they brought the, the safe standing in, which has done great for the for the club. But I still feel like the safe standing should have been given to Green Brigade for the full safe standing. Because you find that on match days, half the safe standing don't sing at the back. And I think it'd be amazing to see flags up the back of that, two sticks, banners, just that full safe standing going nuts for 90 minutes. I think our stadium would be completely different. Ah, look, you don't even need a safe stand. You have once you have a full house, place is electric anyway. And that's a full house, but see when it's like your Wednesday night versus freaking St. Martin, like we're going to go in in a minute. Um, it's just it's weird, it's a weird atmosphere when it's only you, you look over because where like we sit, it's like another stand. So we look over and you can see him in the corner, and you think, like, that should I remember back in the day when it was 1 1 1 and that full corner was jumping for 90 minutes straight. Sometimes 10 minutes after the team had even went in the dugout, we're still sitting there singing, chatting away. Um, and the, only time I've ever been, the only time I've ever been in the safe, sa- safe standing section was actually Bruno's testimonial at the front, still at the bottom. Oh, wow. See, so don't even have a chance to experience it. No, it was all allowed to blow in like myself. <laughs> blow the kids at it. <laughs> well, the kids leading the chance. Listen, um, I mean, Logo well, has the under for a club. You can't, you can't deny that. But the, this season, again, like I've said time and time again, it's questionable. He's gambled in the 10, and it's it's cost us, sadly. And yes, it's, it's still mathematically possible. If it, if it was a case that he gambled. Coming it was up, a case. Hopefully coming up, which could help us mad, massively. Do you know what? Do you know what's crazy? If it was a case that we gambled in Europe, we qualified for the Champions League, and we got to the last 16, and we lost the league, he could turn around and say, you know what? Fucking fair enough. We were off the pedal, but it, we didn't qualify for the Champions League. We don't shit in Europa League. For you don't believe we got pumped off teams that we should have bet. And and we were like I was saying when we when we got beaten by Fernandes, we're a Europa League team. We got into Europa League with a skin of our teeth, beating fucking Regan and Sajeva on our like embarrassed. Fernandes, man, oh me. Thing is, did you see the group they had? They had boss in that in that group, and I was like, oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it would have been, it would have been, would have been a FIFA score, you know. Like you, t- you bring in Gordon Strachan. We done well with Gordon Strachan. Like that was a strange appointment at the time. Weirdest appointment to this day is still Ronnie Dyla. 
Ronnie yeah, Dyla went out for the assistant manager job and for some reason walked away with the manager job. Oh, and listen, yes. you can't fault Ronnie. Ronnie was amazing. He done well for that club for what we needed. We didn't have the Huns there. We didn't have hearts. We didn't have hips. That league was for us to walk and we done it. That's it. We won a League Cup. We don't want two toilets. We don't shit in Europe. We don't all right in the Europa League. Always just shit, right, always just shit in Europe. It was been what, what my 16? 15, 16, 15, right there. So it's been eight years since we last reached a decent Champions League stage after the group stage. Yeah, and that was, that was against Barcelona. Juventus. No, Juventus. I, the Barcelona, you ended up playing Juventus. Hmm. And it was like, for then we've just kind of dropped form. But we've, we've, we've got like no starting 11 from that era. What do you think of um, when, obviously, when he he appointed Brendan Rodgers? I think that was the best one he done. Last night the best deal done. And as a, as a, both groups said, don't ga- give Rodgers the backing that he needs. Give him the money. Because I think see if he got the money that he needed in the January transfer window, he would have stayed. He wouldn't have went to Leicester. If he got the money he needed to make that Celtic team the Celtic team that he had in mind, he wouldn't need, he wouldn't fucking have left. He'd have stayed and he'd still be here to this day. It's crazy though. A year a year ago, if you talked about Rogers, majority of fans like he's a fucking snake. He's this Listen, and, and a lot of them are taking the back. It will, it will always be the rat to me. It always will be because what he done. If I went to Leicester, look, I will. I'm going to stay with Celtic till the end of the season, win the treble, and then and like see that if I went down in history, let him leave. It's how he done it. He done it like that. One day we sell it, manager. The next day was gone. I Nobody think it was. I think it was the mother. I think it was the mother. Well, interview after the game. He's like, oh, I'm happy. The speculations are rumors. And then I got. I got a message on the Monday night saying that he's leaving. He's leaving Celtic, and I know. I put it up on the page. I got laughed at. People were like, "Take this down, or you're, I'm reporting your page." Like, I was like, the next twenty four hours, I say something. I'm being told that he's leaving. Oh, he's leaving. And it happened the Tuesday morning. I was like, well, who looks like a fucking spy now? And then but, on the uh, Wednesday, they sitting Lennon for the Hearts game. That's it. Like, but that was like, it was, it's been a roller coaster of nine years. Like, you know, for like Lennon came back in, he got in the dugout at Tynecast. No, no one thought he was. The like Craig Levine's face when Edward scores isn't the best things I've ever seen. Ever. And Lennon's just going nuts. But Tony Mulberry was a shambles, an absolute shambles. We never should have appointed him. He was never fit for it. Who's that? Who should be, who should be fit? Um, Tony Mulberry. Oh, no, fuck that. That's an era I don't want to remember. Listen, Mulberry was a fucking... Oh, Mo, I was at Hamden. I was at Hamden against St Mirren. I remember that game very well. Holy fuck. And when it got announced that, that, like, when it was, he was gone, it was, like, the best thing. Lennon came in. Lennon done wonders. Lennon left. We brought this unknown guy, Ronnie Dyla, in. And then, for going for Ronnie Dyla to, now, to Brendan Rodgers, it was a massive, like, like there's like, that much difference there. It's, like, it's amazing. Top tier well, manager. I, 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 and then, I wonder if you well, can we go to that level now? Can we go to that level? This is where you were saying it, about Domo. Only... Domo, needs... Domo needs to come out and say to the fans, get the Celtic trust in, or get the Celtic fans in, have a social distance, meet with them, or even invite them to Celtic way. He stands there with a big fucking spiker like he's in the Green Brigades. Say, this is the plan. We have a three-year, four-year plan. We're going to rebuild for next season. Troy win a cup. Troy bounce back in the league. Second second term around, we're gonna go. We're gonna win the league. We're gonna qualify for the Champions League. We need big promises. We need to hit the heights that we should be. Because as we talked about European football, it's been the last time Juventus. It was the last time we were in the Champions League knockout stages. Fair enough, we got to the knockout stage Europa League last season, which was a fucking great campaign. But we were short against Copenhagen. We need we need clarity. See what we like. Around Copenhagen as well was the fans were too unison with each other. There was none of that aggression. It was the when what was it the song that they they sing, tsunami and all the fans yeah. are together. So that's not the Celtic support. The Celtic support meant to fucking die die in and abuse and it just wasn't like that. It was just that pure weird atmosphere for Copenhagen, and it was like, was it nice? Yes, the fans were getting on, but what we need to remember is 
these cuts are pally with pals with the Huns. If I'm just reading Sarah's, what does that say? If COVID never happened, we wouldn't be in this situation a week before an old, old firm game we were on shit form. The Celtic one slip you would even sat. Listen, you can't not credit Stephen Gerrard. Listen, what he's done with that Rangers squad, but everything they've been through, he's done amazing. Fair play to them, man. He'll go into bigger things, he'll go to Liverpool in the next two years. He will. You know that for a fact. He's not enough for it, though. But yeah, but who who else is going to you think? Look what Chelsea's done. Look what uh, who else has done it? Wayne Rooney. Liverpool will capitalise on this because they'll see it as Jurgen will not be contract, and it'll be a, a an icon coming back because they know he can. He done it at Rangers. I I see him going to Liverpool in the next two years. Put my money it's on. Not good enough for it. My family are Liverpool fans. I hope he goes to you through it. He already what he's done at Rangers that he'll never live up to that credibility again. But he's got good experience. He's came up. He's done well. Yes, he has witnessed us pump his team time and time again. And listen, this season has been a great season for Rangers in general. We can't deny it. And we can't. They've, they've been on fire. And, and, and that's, what I'm and that's... Saying, from now till the end of February. They've got two Euro- European games to play. And we've got our games in hand. Um, and it's like we could capitalise on them getting injured and them starting to drop form because they're playing week in, week out. That could help us majorly. Ah, look, I, I think it's out of our hands. I think the league is gone, to be honest. I think it's well gone. I will not lose the faith until they tell me it's done. Oh, I will fuck. back to 10 until I know it's fucking sorted. If it's done, until it's you, done. Until, until you see yellow and sky sports table, Aye. that's when you say fuck. Yeah, that when it sinks in. Listen, I've got family at Rangers fans, I do. And like they tell me, I your league's done. The league's mathematically not done yet. We've still two games in hand to play, and we've still two old firms. That's 12 points. 12 is Morelos points. getting is Morelos getting the suspension? Uh three match, I'm sure I read. Well, well look at that's a big I know they've roof and they have to fall and stuff like that, but um but again, they're starting to hit their, their, their slip again. They'd only scored one lot like that on Wednesday. And they only scored one at the week during the week weekend again. They're only scoring one goal there now, and it feels like they're starting to the pressure's on them again. But, 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 you, but you know, but you know what? Uh, that's how teams don't man, you know, you've done it for years, and that's how it you, you win nasty to win legs, and that's how it's done. We've done it, we done it they're, many they're times as well. Again, and I feel like this is where they're going to slip up because they're going to start getting cards, and all these cards add up, remember. We'll see, so right? I, let's. If, by, by March, if we are, if we have caught them, but our games in hand in the old firm, there's a title race on. Right, we're going to move on to Saint Mirren. Saint Mirren have only won one game in the last five, and that was five games ago. So they're seven in the table. Um, and obviously, can they are five one on Wednesday night, five one against Dundee United. Was that that must have been the one? Was it? And like, yeah, that, the one just there. That's it. So right, that's a big. That was a big result for him. We've got but, a good home record against it, man. We yeah, do. but but this season against these smaller so-called teams, it's you can't predict the win. You can't predict the win, but St. Man are now they were on a high for the cup semi. They should have. That should have went into extra time. I watched that game. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that's good. Fair enough, Daniel. Um, I know St. Man, they're on a great form. They are, they're just wet. They've got to a semi final. They've got unlucky. There were two or three penalty claims that could have been penalties. I've watched it. Um, but I see is where the where what happened on when we, they, they don't they done something that we didn't do beat the Huns this season for fuck's sake. <laughs> time's not up yet. Keep it's believing, not. keep keep fucking believing. Just, I've got a conspiracy and I tell my missus this, I tell my brother this. Adidas have been a jinx. We should have stuck the new balance. Yeah, that's you're right. I, I, I thought when we had the kind of yellow and gold in the in the neck. And jinxed when, it. Remember when Gordon Strachan got we had the V-neck with the yellow and we fucked up. So I, I, I believe the same thing as well. I know. Um listen, I feel like we can go out tomorrow and do it. I do. It's, well, they put on a good show, yes, but what we need to do is not play Duffy. No, he's starting on Keep start. So I'd, I'd have Bain again. Bain was outstanding on Wednesday night. Couldn't fault him. Greg Taylor stays left back for me. Why he lacks what was even brought in is a question I'd love to ask. Greg Taylor would have had no faults. I would have 
beat on in Welsh over Duffy. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't fucking entertain Duffy. I don't entertain Duffy. Ayer at right back. Sorrow at centre, centre defence. Who's left back again? Taylor. Taylor. Sorrow at centre defence in mid. Turnbull and McGregor. Uh, fucking... Oh shit, head went blank. So Sorrow, Callum McGregor, Turnbull. Turnbull. You have your card for field. El Nusi. And Christie. And then if if we're not doing that, if we're not playing El Nusi and Christie, El Nusi and then Graf, Graf playing behind Edward. I said Callum McGregor playing the right. Right, so my starting lineup would be Bain and Goal. I'd play Laxall tomorrow. I know that sounds crazy. Laxall tomorrow. Um, beat on. I play Duffy because he's at the playing a few games, so I play him as much as I like Welch. I think Welch deserves a chance. I really do think Welch deserves a chance. It's the only way he's going to get better by playing him against these teams. It could be, it'd be, I think it'd be beat on and Duffy. Um, or a right back, he has to play right back. We're not going to play Anthony Ralston there, no offense, but you know, be you know, and midfield. You have to play the three lads. You play you play Sorrow in there breaking up. Sorrow has been absolutely amazing. You know, it's, it's just another night. Like I get the I get I actually get the butterflies when I see Sorrow fucking playing well. Like, always happy as well. He's just this wee happy wee guy who's running about the pitch. Like, you know, I haven't got that fucking haven't got that buzz about an African midfielder since fucking Wanyama, you know, it's been good times. <laughs> um Sorrow, Tumble, McGregor, Mohammed Anusi, and I go with the two up front. You'd have to play Griffin Edwards. So you know, the only thing that would change together would be the, our, our defense at left back and centre back. I just don't think personally. I just don't think Christie's good enough for the starting eleven at the moment. He's not been. He's not been on point. Um, for some reason, he's he's slacking off a bit. But I don't know if that's because he's missing the link with James Forrest. Could be. Could, could, him and James he, Forrest play with each other. The way Griffin Edwards do, they played with each other. They done wonders together. It would be you'd see for it and and always for some reason it went to Christie and it went in nine times out of ten that ball went in. Wizard of Oz gonna come on tomorrow, is he? His time is up at Celtic this summer. Tam Logic, I love him. Love big Aussie Tam. You cannot underrate Aussie Tam. Some of the goals he scored. His goal against AC Milan, absolute belter. Oh, I some seeing the goals he scored at Hamden. Um, oh, they're unbelievable. But I think his time's up. I think he'll go, and I'd like to see him go to somewhere that will get good use out of him. But somewhere like nice weather. <laughs> That's I, like, I like to see him. I like, I like to see him in the MLS or something like LA Galaxy or something. He'd be dead out there, you know, or a fucking Al- Atlantic or Atlanta, you know, somewhere weird like that. Definitely. Um, I. My score prediction for tomorrow, I'm going to fancy 3-0 tomorrow. Again, it depends on t- the team lineup. I'm saying I'm going to give them a, ch- a chance, sitting on, but I'm going to say 3-1. 3-1? I, I can see them scoring at least one. Yes. Do you think it's a, do you think it's a, a we, Duffy? If we play Duffy, yes, it's going to be a set play goal. Like Livingston, it'll be a set play goal. Uh, Duffy just seems to try to fit everything. All Duffy can do is try to prove the haters wrong for the rest of the season and then get a few clean sheets with the defence. That's all he can try to do. And then let uh, him go. Let him go. Um, where, where, where was it? Petshaw failed miserably, never settled in his fourth season. Based on this new manager comes in, could see a clean state for Barakas, put a decent set of defence in the front of him. We need a new defensive coach, full stop. Oh, fucking Stratton's been horrible. He, he has a... Kennedy is our defensive coach as well. I uh, they, they two have just I don't know what they've done with set plays this year, but it feels like they've not practiced them at all. <laughs> I think I think they're too busy on Strachan's only fans account, doesn't <laughs> yeah, they're on fucking indeed they're just on a like, fucking seat for Neil Lennon. Uh, that's it. So what score are you gonna go with for tomorrow? Three one. I'm saying three one. Right. I'm gonna fancy three I'm gonna fancy three and I'm gonna fancy Griffiths double and I'm gonna fancy Callum McGregor. If you say Griff double, you know Griff's going to go try and get that hat trick tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I give I, I tip my heart off to Griff because it's he's just lost his cousin. He went out, scored a goal, and tributed him. And the t shirt was there for whoever scored the first goal was going to hold that up. From what I've heard, 
That was yeah, the one. Before I was nice. watching me about the other day. It was nice. It was Graf that held it up because it meant more. Um, but I three one. Um, Edward Graf. Is it bad that I could see like Sorrow or Tumble getting an outside the box goal again? What about Duffy to score? <laughs> see, if Duffy, see if Duffy scores. I'll personally DJ. Listen, I'll personally DJ on your page for two hours straight if Duffy scores tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna have to go get a, a Duffy top printed for you as well. Mate, I'll give you fuck. I'll, I'll, my pal does retro top. I'll let you pick any retro top, and I'll get Duffy in the back here. Right. So actually, while we're here, you have, you do retro jerseys. So if anyone's yeah. looking for any retro jerseys, what which ones do you have? Uh, we've the ones we do. Um, uh, Celtic, Rangers, Scotland, Ireland, Man United, Liverpool. Newcastle, Leeds, Man City, basically most of the big clubs. We, we cover them all. Borussia Dortmund, Bayern Munich, PSG. Um, and it's free printing for name and, name and number, free print. Most tops average from 25 to £30, no matter what club it is. We do have lim- we do get limited edition stock in. Wait, just if you just want to know, about it, mail it on to me and I'll get you in touch with Connor. I'll even put up his page. What we got in? Which you can see it's a cracker of an old one. The 86 one. Didn't get anyone in that. And then we've got we've got this one in on stock in general. So we've got that Perfect. with the man, the myth, the legend. I have mine destroyed with Guinness stands. Only got a, I only got a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> Guinness, by the way, you love your Guinness. That's um, it. We're getting more in every every week. We're getting more in talks in. It's like. You, you, you should try get should get Troy get me one of them Guinness T-shirts. One of the cut. Do you ever see the, the barmaid ones? Just go around with a black Guinness T-shirt. I'd be I'd be wearing them. Is that Christmas present sorted? Um, I we're getting all different ones in, and yes, we do, like I said, we do cater for Rangers fans as well because we're not diverse. Motherwell right back, yeah, clown. I've been linked with the Motherwell right back. Do you have the eighty-two? Oh, Donald. Oh, Donald. Uh, is this the one you're talking about? Wait, there, because I think we've got it in. Even Stephen O'Donnell. And then we have we could be looking at Gallagher as well. Um, so they're talking about the pin straight one. Except I've got all the pictures saved on my phone because there's certain ones that I want. That I is it the white one? Is it the white one? Because I got the white one there a few weeks ago. With the that I think that's got, the one. We've got that one in. Yep, 82, 83, 30, yep. We've got that. But do you know what I noticed? So you look at that one, all right? Yeah. Do you remember the new balance screenshot? Yeah, the the four season. Nah. The Tom Rogers, Kilmarnock. What do you notice? That's it. How fucking... So we've That's... got that and... Um, wait, uh, what other ones have we got? The website's actually down at the moment because of the suppliers lost a family member. So we're just waiting for him to get back to himself and we'll start taking orders. Um, except I'm just... Yes. <clears throat> so we'll... Yeah. we'll... We've noticed Someone's... Celtic are selling them for forty-five, fifty pound, and we are selling twenty-five pound. We've got this is one I could see you in. I already have it. I have it. We've got that. We've got this one. I've never worn it. I don't have that one. Like twenty-five pound, and um, there's a weight top. The that's the one. That's the one I was wearing the other day. <laughs> the belly will be with it. Um, this is Tina Ray top with the cross. I'm sure we do have. Like I said, the, the, the page is down at the moment, so I'm not sure what's getting that. The old CRS month are more twice as well. Oh, mate, I, I agree. I'm only I'm 23, but I love my retro kits. I've always loved my retro kits. Um, Definitely. Right, so that's it. Um, I'll be back on tomorrow night. Um, we'll see if we can get Connor back on. Good to have you on. I hope you've enjoyed the video tonight, folks. I know these podcasts go on for a bit an hour, but there's so much to talk about. As I said, we, we talked about the Law Well thing. Where where we go forward as a club, it's up to the, it's up for Big Dominic to come in now at the end of the season. Hopefully, he comes in before that, behind the scenes, starts getting negotiating with managers. Because like if you keep Neil Lennon on for next season, they'd be mad. I'm going to lose a lot of season ticket holders. That's all I'm saying. If we keep Lennon on, you'll see a lot of people not renewing their season tickets, and it'll be a sad day in Celtic if they do because Lennon deserves to go out on a good note. And I hope from now at the end of the season, he doesn't drop that many points where we can go and say, Joe Lennon, you tried at least. You tried to bring it back. Well done. And that's it ended. No more Lennon talk. We focus on the new CEO, 
we look at we're focusing on a new manager, a new team. We let this new we let them all come in as a fresh start and see who will fight for their place. Exactly. Well, it was good like having you. It's good having you on, Connor. Take care of yourself, and I hope we speak to you soon. And thanks very much for watching, everyone else, folks. God bless, and we'll be back. See you after, guys. Take care.